I want to ask you a very esoteric question. One of the talks that you had talked about vibration impacts our reality. Mm. And this, this, this is a little metaphysical idea. Uh, and in my mind, the way I will articulate is, yeah, there's the subject reality and then there's the object reality. The outside reality impacts my subject reality. And likewise, I can also create something that also impacts reverberates to the external reality as well for everyone else. So I'm curious to know how you interpret or how you uh, create new reality through music. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and on some level, and we can get it, we can get to it another time. I would even challenge the notion that there is an objective reality. I would actually okay. challenge that notion okay. because objective reality, really what you're saying um, is to the consensus of yeah. many subjective realities. Yes. Okay? yes. That's actually what it is. It's, yes. it's not a truly objective reality because for instance, if I was a neutrino, okay, mm -hmm. like a neutrino particle, I would be flying through this desk and the whole earth for that matter. Mm -hmm. without thinking that there was anything there. That's right. It would just be just empty space for me. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, yeah. for, now you know, for you and I, that's it's absurd. Okay. But there's a desk here. I see it. I feel it. I touch it. Yeah. Only because our subjective experience collectively is such that, yes, this is a hard surface and we can't put our hand through it. But th that's not the reality for everything, right? Yeah. In any case, that's a very fine, fine point. In terms of vibration... There's a wonderful phenomenon, especially with music, that when you gather people together in a theater, in a hall, and I'm playing music or any musician, it turns out that the brainwave frequencies that each participant in the audience has, right, they're each different because we each have our own brains generating electric impulses, which are brainwave frequencies. And each person will have their own frequency, different from the person next to them. After a certain amount of time listening to the same music, there will be a gradual coherence between all the participants in the room, where their brain waves will start to vibrate and emit frequencies at the same frequency level. Mm -hmm. Something pretty remarkable. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. So there is this ability to influence each other and our surroundings through frequency. So when we start to see the whole world and the whole universe as an infinite spectrum of frequency, mm -hmm. which is truly what it is, mm -hmm. that's what's happening. That's all yeah. it is. We're, everything, whether it's physical, hard matter, liquid, gas, everything around us. If it's made up of particles, or even if it's not, if it's, well, of course, arguably, uh, even electromagnetism, light, are both waves and particles. Yep. All of it is frequency. Mm -hmm. Just different frequency. Some of it we can sense. Most of it we can't. Correct. And so when we start to think of it that way, then everything's about manipulating and being in relationship with frequencies. And again, that's why music is so powerful. So with that understanding, frequency effectively influence slash create our reality. How are you using it as a way to powerfully bring forth and shift your reality? Can you share with us maybe a few rituals or prayers or intention setting type things as a way to shift uh, your external reality. Absolutely. So if we take, if we take a lesson from quantum physics, from quantum mechanics, we, we understand that at the fundamental layers of the universe, all things are probabilistic waves. Okay. Mm -hmm. All that means for people listening who don't, who haven't studied quantum physics, all you, all we have to understand is that everything, every particle is in an uncertain state and it's in many locations at the same time. And some locations are more probable for it to be there than other locations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if we extrapolate that, okay, 
metaphorically, if we extrapolate that up to our level of experience, we can envision the future as this endless possibilities, these endless probabilities. Some futures are more likely than others, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Some futures Mm -hmm. are less likely than others, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? And it operates on this curve, just like quantum wave functions do, just quantum probability. And as we move through life, we're actually, like we talk about in, in the quantum world, we're collapsing the wave function. When we do that in the quantum world by observing the interactions, well, in the real world, by living, by our actions, moment to moment, we're collapsing the life wave function, right? The past, we know what happened. There's not a probability of the past, right? Because there were many probabilities and we collapsed that down. When we look to the future, we can actually take it in as, I like to visualize this huge field before me with different pathways. And each of these pathways is a different future that lies ahead for me. I can choose this direction, that direction. It's almost an infinite number of them. Mm -hmm. And for those who, and for the people who believe, and many physicists do believe that there is this notion of multiple universes where each one of our futures branches off into its own universe where it plays out. But if we start to really embrace that idea, it can open up more choice for us. And it's almost like we start to resonate on the level of the future that we want to call in. And we don't even have to think of that as a physical phenomenon. It's more an intention one because for most people, their future is actually quite narrow. If they don't have this kind of awareness, then their future, they've already resigned their future typically because of fears and because of conditioning, social conditioning, they've already said, hey, this is the pathway I'm going to take. They've set that in motion. So there's really, there would be very few surprises for most people in their life, of like COVID or something that's so outside the realm. In their personal life, there would be very little that would surprise them. Yeah. Um, and again, because people like stability and they like to have that kind of assurance in life. And and they go down that path. But there's another reality that's available for people where we truly open up to many different possibilities, some more probable than others. So how are you using vibration or music or intention as a way to shift the probabilities of your more favorable probabilities versus the less favorable? So those, yeah, so they literally are frequencies. So each Mm -hmm. future is like a certain note in the scale. And if I start to think about it, I'm generating brain frequencies that will actually resonate with that future. So that's the idea behind it, okay? Is that if I can generate frequencies that can connect with that next future moment, Mm -hmm. which is only a thought, that's all the next future moment is like, what's the next future moment, but a thought, which turns into a feeling and turns into an action. But what's the, if you were to look at someone's future, you'd say they would have to do a whole bunch of actions to achieve that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are those? If you were to reverse engineer it, the last action they needed to take had an action preceding it an action preceding that and an action preceding that. And all those actions had some kind of belief and thought behind them. Yep. So how do you start that chain? You have to create a certain chain of thought that cascades. And that's what intention is. It's exactly what intention is. I see. Okay. Intention is I am going to manufacture a thought that will trigger a feeling, which is going to trigger an action. And by the way, that way of being, by showing up in the world that way, will trigger other people's actions towards you. Mm. And that's why people say, oh, when you create that intention, you're attracting or manifesting things into your life. 
you don't have to think of it as some metaphysical, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. I actually don't. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. You can simply think of it as, take a, take a simple example. If you show up to a meeting with someone, a friend or a business person, whoever, partner, doesn't matter, anyone, and they're sitting like this. <laughs> hey, what's up? Like aloof, detached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depressed. I don't know. They're just like out of it. What's your energy going to be like? Mirroring exactly you're gonna, that. You're gonna you're gonna be forced into that energy. I, I, yeah. no, unless you're just and certainly even if you maintain your own composure. Yeah, you're certainly not gonna go out of your way to want to. I don't know, like connect yeah. with that person. You're like, oh, this is like weird vibes. It takes a very special Dalai Lama level magnanimous yeah. person to want to. You'd be like, oh, I don't vibe with that person. Like, yeah. that's weird yeah. energy. Okay, now take the opposite example. The example is you show up in a room and someone is just, like, hey, it's great to meet you. Great to see you. Great to see you again. Or if they're a friend, you, you, you jump right back into the flow of things. And there's a positivity. There's a connection. They see a sense of purpose in you, right? They see a drive. They see a willingness, a curiosity, all the things we talked about. Now, how would I want to react if I just met someone like that? I want to show up that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now what happens? We're up-leveling each other. Mm -hmm. And now we each, it becomes a create a creative loop. So now possibility gets created. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to create something with that person, you can do that. You can be like, hey, why don't we try this? Why don't we do that? Why don't we, and now things happen. I just got the goosebumps thinking about it. That's just, that's how shit happens. So guys, I want to underline what Murray just saying here. We could easily go into the esoteric, the spiritual, but really if this is the nature of human beings, we reciprocate on each other's behaviors. When someone else is, ex ex is excited, is joyous, we get excited. When you're excited, when you're joyous, other people get excited. And, it, and then vice versa, when you're sad or angry, the energy reverberates to everyone around you. So it's, it could be seem as esoteric, but really in my mind, this is as tangible as material as it is. This is just human beings. This is the nature of human beings.